God, our Father, we thank you, God, today, God, for this time, God. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you just help us, God, tonight, God. God, we pray, God, that you bless your word, God. Uh, God, that you just continue, God, to link hearts, God. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You take time to greet someone with us. Amen. We just got a few announcements. Just want to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10, every Wednesday at 7. Amen. Uh, don't forget, you can always uh, go back and look at services, previous services on YouTube. Uh, October 27th through the 29th, we're going to have uh, Revival in Rosarito. Amen. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, you want to be a part of that? It'll be a good, good opportunity to see what God's doing. Amen. In other countries, I guarantee you, it's it's different than going to church over here. Amen. Same God, same stuff, but it's just a whole different thing, man. We got hungry people for God. Amen. Uh, uh, November fourth and fifth, we're having a two-day revival with Pastor Martin Duran from Tijuana, Mexico. Amen. Pastor Martin's a good 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 pastor he's a good guy good friend amen um it's, a, it's exciting to have him so we're gonna have pastor martin I, that's a saturday and a sunday uh saturday the fourth and sunday the fifth amen he's gonna do the saturday night and sunday morning amen so you don't want to miss it uh we're gonna have the churches in the area they're gonna come on, with us on saturday so we should have a full house on saturday so i need everybody here to come just come and and make them feel welcome amen remember this is your house amen Let's welcome it, welcome them in, amen, as, as uh, we worship God together. And these are the announcements we're going to lift up an offering. So let's worship God as worship goes forward. <laughs> amen. You know what? Uh, on, the, on the slide it says, bring your tithe, give your offering, and support missions. These are the three principles of giving, amen, that we, that we stand by here. At, at our church amen we bring our tithe a tithe is is 10 percent of your increase it's what what god has blessed you with amen uh that's holy it's it's there's story after story in the bible how tithing is 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 biblical um you, when you when you when you that it's the only it's the only part of the bible that where god says ask me for something but challenge me with it and and, and let me let me show you that it works in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8, 9, and 10, it says, Will a man rob God? It says, Yes, I have robbed thee. Yes, you have robbed thee. It says, What have you robbed thee? It says, In tithes and offerings. It says, For you are cursed with a curse. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse and prove me now herewith that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive it. When he says, Prove me now that I, that, and prove me now herewith, what he's saying is, Bring your tithes into the storehouse. Bring it to church. Bring it. He says, And prove me now herewith. He says, He goes, Bring it and challenge me that I won't bless you. The God we serve will always meet our needs, amen, over and over again. Trust in God, bring your tithe, bring an offering besides, amen, and let's support missions as we touch the world for Jesus, amen. Remember, you can give on Zell, you can give in the basket, amen, but you give and allow God to bless you, amen. So let's bow our hearts as Brother Angel bless the gift from the giver. Father God, we ask that you bless these tithes and offerings brought before you this evening, God. We ask that you bless those that continue to give faithfully into your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Eagles are before him, and there is a What a mighty God we serve. Amen. 
So on Wednesdays, what I've been doing is I've been doing uh, Bible studies regarding basic living. It's basic living. You know, we've gone over several things um, about being pure, presenting yourself as a holy person unto God, about not being tired and serving God, about uh, choosing servants. We even talked about the, sim the simplicity of salvation. And for the wage of the sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And I'm going to get into something, you know, um, for the next couple of weeks. It's, that it's, it's an important part of us serving God. Because if we're honest about it, it's something I think that every one of us have trouble with. Um, some more than others, and some in different ways than others. When I talk about it, you can be like, oh, you, you pastor. But this is what it is. If I was to tell you what is sin, or when you hear the word sin, what comes to mind naturally? What just comes to mind? There's no, there's no wrong answer here. If I said, what's sin? What would you think? It can be anything for anybody. Go ahead, Cynthia. Get on the tip of your tongue. I know you've heard it say. Just get it out of the way now. <laughs> What's sin? Something that doesn't glorify God. Ooh, there you go. Something that doesn't glorify God, right? So, and the, why should we glorify God? What does the Bible tell us about glorifying God? It says, in all you do, do as unto the Lord, right? So everything we do, we got to do unto God. And, and a lot of times when we hear the word sin, we think, we think of, of two things. One hell and the other one like the really bad nasty stuff that we think everyone else does and not us amen but what i want to talk about is is the words that we speak i think of, like i said i think of it we're all honest with ourselves i think we all can say things that we probably shouldn't now myself i include myself now i don't i don't i don't swear i don't cuss i don't use foul language um, I've had plenty of people in my life to give me plenty of reasons to, I can justify myself to say bad words, but I don't, okay? But, there's still other things. Is there other things that we can say besides bad words that could be said? See, head's not it, right? Other things, right? Right, what about hurtful things or, 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 or words of, you know, cursing? Not cursing words like foul language cursing, but cursing cursing people. They can just go to, and, and, and we want to complete our sentences, right? So the words that we say can be really bad. You know what? I don't like her. I don't like him. They're so ugly. Things that we say. Things, things that don't glorify God, right? It's a good answer, Cynthia. Things that don't glorify God. So I want to read the book of Matthew. And if we're going to talk about things we should or shouldn't say, I think we should go right to Jesus Christ and see what he, said, what he thinks about this, okay? So, we're going to read this in two ways, two versions of it. In the original King James, from the original translation for King James, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 16 to 20. Matthew 15, 16 to 20. And this is the way it was written when it was first translated. It says, And Jesus said, Are ye also without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whosoever that that whatsoever entereth into in at the mouth goeth entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defileth the man. For out of, the, out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed, unwashed hands defileth not a man. Okay, so to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Why do you think they said that? eat with unwashed hands so let's say you know you know there's a, a, a um, we have a cousin she's already gone to be with the lord but but the joke was 
was one time she invited the other cousin to their house to go and eat, and she was making enchiladas, right? <clears throat> so she's making enchiladas, and she's getting them, she's rolling them, she's, she's getting them. Disgusting, huh? <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> so that's, that's the that's the inside family joke for those who know about it. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. That doesn't defile a man, right? Don't do that. You'll get him sick. You're gonna you're gonna it defiles a man if you feed him that way, right? That doesn't defile a man. It's not what goes in your mouth that defiles you. Let's read it. Let's read the same scripture in the English Standard Version. It's the other version of the Bible. <coughs> Same scripture, Matthew uh, 15, 16 to 20. It says, and he said, are you, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and it is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and it defiles a person. For out of the heart comes, out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. And the reason why I say it is because you got people who are who are who are who are speaking and, and condemning and doing certain things because remember this is Jesus Christ as he's talking he, he's 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 talking to Pharisees. He's talking to the leaders of of, of, of the of the of the Hebrew of the, the Hellenists and the the, the the church at the time. And what he's doing is he's talking to them because they had so many rules about how to prepare food and how to eat food, and even prepare food was already a, a task, but even to eat it was a task. Okay, there were certain rules that were required. And just saying, he goes, "You guys are so caught up on your rules." On, on all this other stuff and you're missing the point you're so caught up on the rules of of how to eat something but missing the point of how to live clean does that make sense they're so caught up in, in this that they forgot about this that the things that they're saying defiles them right so it's not it's not it's not what we put in our mouth that defiles them and and, and and we've we've had some fortunate We've been fortunate to be able to do a little traveling these past couple of years. And one of the things was when we went to Peru, the biggest thing my wife was was worried about was the food. She, she didn't know what they eat. I don't know what they eat. I don't, I'm, not, I'm afraid because what if it's horrible stuff? We're going to be out there for, for like nine days and we're going to starve because the food and 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 the food. Turns out, it was probably some of the best food we ever had. However... They are also known for one dish in particular. It's called gooey. Gooey is a nice word to say, but the actual, let me see if I have a picture. But the actual thing is, <laughs> let's see. Oops, no, not there. Put one on the screen for you. And this is Kui. Uh. <laughs> right? It, it is every bit of a rat. <laughs> okay? And and they're actually, I guess, a special breed of like guinea pig is what they said it was and you can you ever been i remember back in the day you can go to you can go to the <laughs> you can go to a to a um to the store and you can buy a live lobster they would have the rubber bands on the lobsters right and if you ever go to like texas roadhouse you can actually pick out your steak right as you're walking in you can pick out your steak now, and I remember back in the days, there was a store, 
called, well, the Ontario Ranch Market and another store called Claps on Ontario. And you can go over there and buy the lobster. And there were full lobsters in a tank of water. And they would just rubber bands and you get the lobster. They do that with the kui. You can go and pick out the one running around. Don't name it because you're going to eat it. Yeah. Or you can eat it. And I remember being a big conversation. Like, oh my God, that's disgusting. Just disgusting. You know that that doesn't make you disgusting? There's a, there's a, the pastor's wife in, in Paris, France. Mm -hmm. She is funny. My God. She is, she is a Venezuelan version of Martha. She's, she's, <laughs> she, she, oh my God, she's too much. She's eating gooey. And she's eating a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of other turtle soup and all kinds of other stuff. And she'll get into conversation. We were at, we were at we were at the at the pastor's house in Italy, and and, and we're talking about the food because there was some you know food over there. So then, so then somebody tells her, tell them about this, about the food, whatever. And then everyone else are saying, no, no, don't say nothing, don't say nothing, because she likes to get animated about it. And she started talking about other food, and everybody's like, ugh, disgusting, 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 right? But everybody sat with her, talked to her. Her husband still kissed her. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good, right? Because that didn't defile her, right? Because when you talk to her, she is extremely sweet, a wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. So what she ate didn't didn't change who she was, right? So that's why that's why Jesus is telling the Pharisees, saying, says, look at, stop talking about what how they're preparing the food. You're more concerned about them washing their hands rather than washing your mouth. Mm. Understand that? That makes it a lot easier, right? The things that we say. Can really defile us right here jesus turns around and he says he says it this way he says for out of the heart out of the heart or from it says i'll read the english standard version and verse 18 says but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart it proceeds it goes through it passes through the heart and this defiles a person for out of the heart comes, out of the heart come evil thoughts. Mm -hmm. Do you think evil thoughts start in our heart? But he's saying, can we speak words? I want you. I want to go over this, because out of the heart come evil thoughts, right? And we're talking about words, the things that you're speaking. That's what comes out of the mouth. Can we speak words of these things? Can we speak words of murder? Because that's, that's what he starts off with. He said, evil thoughts, first one out, murder. Can we speak words of murder, death? Now let's, now let's define what murder is. So what's death? Okay. What's, what's, what, what, what's murder? It's killing something, right? But what are we? Are we physical or are we spiritual? When we're living for God, you're spiritual. Like I'm not, I'm not, and I, when I say that, I'm not saying it to get some kind of like, get all weird. I'm saying this, this is really, we're, this is spiritual world. We live in a spiritual world. Things we do are spiritual. Jesus Christ is spirit. He's spirit, right? He came in the flesh and now he's spirit. It's a spiritual world. The things we do are in spirit. Now, with that being said, can we speak words of murder? When we're, think, when we're talking murder, we're talking death, we're talking killing, right? We automatically think, okay, well, this person killed that person. Okay. Now, how does that apply spiritually? Can we spiritually can we speak spiritual words of murder? Murder, and can I get an example? How can we do that? How can we say spiritual words of murder? Well, it's all you, John. It's all you. <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming I don't know the answer, but it's just like because it's, it's a bad intention that's coming from your mouth. So if you think it, it's just like it's it's, it's, it's spiritual because it's like it's out there. It's not like. And we're gonna get into that, right? It's not. It's not. Um, it's your thought. And that's be, your thought is spiritual, like just. So, so how can we speak words of murder, killing? Remember, we're talking spiritual now. Well, I, I'll give you an example. We got we got Billy right here. Normally, I would say Johnny, but we have a Johnny in the church, so I'm gonna say Billy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got Billy sitting here. Uh... Billy comes to church. Billy doesn't shower that well. Billy comes from a rough background. Billy's just coming out the streets. But you know what? Billy has a heart for God. Billy comes and sits down. I see Billy has a heart for God. Man, Billy, you know it's going to be okay. You know, what are you doing right now? Oh, you know what? You want to go? Let's, let's go get something to eat, man. Let's go get something to eat. Okay. Go and there goes the pastor getting this guy something to eat. 
What does Pastor Ken have some D for? That guy smells. Right? Or, hey, have you seen Billy? Yeah, I've seen Billy. Man, what the heck is he wearing today? I don't know. People like him come all the time. He ain't going to make it. He ain't going to, yeah, he ain't going to make it. Watch you. Watch him more than about a month. He'll be here anymore. We're talking spiritual death here, right? You're condemning, you're cursing the guy, right? What should we be doing with Billy? Man, Billy, <laughs> Billy, I'm so glad to see you today. Come here, come here, Billy. I ain't worried about Billy giving me lice because I ain't got hair. So, Billy, come here. <laughs> <laughs> And, and but that's how we should embrace them, right? Yeah. But what do we do instead? And I use I use Brother David as an example in the Rialto Church because Brother David will tell you himself. Brother David, if you guys don't know, he's in the Rialto Church. He's the tall, skinny, older, um, cholo stylish uh, Mexican guy in, in the church. He's like their head usher. He does their announcements for them. He's always probably the sharpest dressed guy in the church. Mm -hmm. he, he really is. And he also does landscaping at a good price. So if you guys need a land, I'm just playing. Wow. <laughs> so you know, I was sad because he does my yard. Um, and when you meet him, one of the nicest guys. Yes. Yeah. In the world, I currently work with somebody who grew up around him. Brother David started a gang in, in, in Pomona. When he came to church, he looked homeless. Literally looked and smelled homeless. Mm -hmm. He was not homeless. But he lived as a homeless because he was so messed up on his drinking and on his drugs. Messed up. Came in, was rude, was obnoxious, was disruptive. And we had a choice to make with him. Either we keep him in the church or we remove him because he's disrupting everybody. And say, you know what, sorry, but you can't come here. Obviously, we chose to keep him. Don't worry, David. You're going to be okay, David. You're going to make it, David. We're going to pray. Come on, David. Let me pray with you. David's going to be okay. You know what, David? You want to go to a home? We, I got a, we got a home for you. Let's take you to a home. And we took him to a home. And he came out. You sure you want to? Yeah, I want to come out. And he came out and he started doing good. Now, you couldn't recognize him. Pastor Andy, he's another one. First time I seen Pastor Andy's before picture, I couldn't believe it was him. It, 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 you can have remnants of him in there, but it's like, what the heck? But when you tell them, they're never going to make it. Guess what you just did? You just condemned the guy, right? Mm -hmm. So these are words of murder, right? We're murdering people by saying saying little things like that. Now, it sound, that sounds harsh when you say it that way. But what's about another one? Words of adultery or sexual immorality. Oh, come on. How can you speak those words, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Everyone who's married? You speak words of adultery? Mm -hmm. Right? Words of adultery, sexual immorality, right? We think word sexual immorality only only comes down to like homosexuality or 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 children abuse, but it's not sexual immorality. Remember, immorality. We're supposed to be moral people. Anything that is immoral, is, when it does sexual, it's sexual immorality for a Christian, right? But we can speak these kind of words. Uh, I listen, well, me and you listen, to a talk news radio, I guess. And this is a form of immorality. So this man was, uh, um, I guess, letting people know that he would watch their dogs while they go out of town. Turns out he was um, having, you know, with their dogs. Yeah. Bestiality. Mm -hmm. So it's out there. But nobody sees me. I'm alone. Okay. Nobody heard me. But God hears us, right? But we're talking words. Now, what about speaking words of theft, right? Stealing. Can we speak words of that that have to do with stealing? Can we can can we can we can we be thieves, right? I'll make a I'll make a simple a simple one. You're at work, okay? You're at work, and and Billy has this great idea, and you heard Billy's great idea. Billy's 
comes out with this great idea. Well, the boss is looking for a great idea right now because he's he's in trouble. Things are going the wrong way, and if you guys don't straighten up, he's gonna get fired. So Billy had this great idea, and and I, I take Billy's idea. You know, Billy has a great idea. Hey, you know, Billy, why don't you go over there and go get that for me? So yeah, sweep over there out the North Forty. You know, with, uh, hey, boss, check this out. Right, and I begin to steal his words. Right, being being a thief. And that's just a small example of it, but but the idea is words, what we say, how we speak, what we do, and we always think. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to leave it with with the thought of of when it comes to what comes out of the mouth. It's always goes to foul language, because I know some. I know some non Christians who don't use bad words, who speak really well, who who actually you. you I didn't realize how horrible a person with foul language sounded until I became a person without foul language. When I became a person that didn't speak that way, when I hear it, it's like, what the heck's wrong with them? It sounds vile. It sounds violent. It sounds horrible because I don't speak that way no more. No, there was a time I did, but I don't no more. A lot of times when we think of words, we're only thinking of the foul language, but there's so much more. Remember, we're spiritual people. We're spiritual, living in a spiritual world. Fal uh, false witness. What's false witness? What's another word for false witness? One word, three letters. Lying. Lying. Lies, right? Don't be lying. You're lying. Don't be lying. Liar. Don't be lying. Liar. Uh-uh. You lie. Don't be lying. 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 Don't be lying. Right? Don't be lying. You know, you know what always impresses me? A person who doesn't lie, who will tell you they don't know. That impresses. That really does. Too many people spend too much time impressing other people, and they come up with so many lies that they know things that they know nothing about. When a person doesn't lie, they don't like lying. They don't. They don't want to be a part of lying. That that's impressive, because it's so easy to 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 stand on that white lie, right? Lies aren't racial. There's no white lies, no brown lies, no black lies, no red yellow lies, yellow lies. They're lies, right? Go ahead, Martha. A little white lie. A little white lie. No, I don't have nothing to say. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Any questions? Know that we're in a battle, okay? We are in a battle. We are in a battle. We are saved by grace. It's not that anything we've done or anything we've deserved, okay? It's by grace that we're saved. It was the grace of God that we received. Do you know that 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 there's certain things like, like at work we have? They just gave me my plaque for 15 years at work. It's the, They're supposed to give them out to you like every five years. They're supposed to give you prizes like every so many years and all this other stuff. I've been there 15 years. This is the first time I received anything, right? So they gave it to me for 15, for 15 years. I don't care, whatever. They gave it to me for 15 years. Well, that's fine, whatever. I, they didn't give it to me before. I don't care about that either. Don't bother me, right? Because because the thing is, is this. It's, it's, it's by grace, right? I have the job. I'm doing the job. They're giving me the pay, paycheck when I'm moving forward. And it's, whether I get a plaque or don't get a plaque, it's not going to affect the future of my, my, my job. I'm not going to quit after 15 years of service because I didn't receive a, a plaque at 10 years, right? doesn't make sense when we accept Jesus Christ you know it was grace grace means it's something undeserving it's something that you didn't earn something that that was just given to you. It was by grace they just gave it to you right it was just something simple we receive salvation by grace so, and it's not something we deserve so in Romans chapter 6 remember we're in a battle and, and a lot of times we can, we can put aside what we think sin is to, as to something else or it doesn't apply to me because I'm this and I'm that or I don't do this, I don't do that. But we always need to strive toward, towards this, right, to be a sinless person. Now, will we ever be sinless? No. But can we sin less? Yes, right? The day we become sinless is going to be the day that we die and we make it to heaven. But until then, we're going to work hard to sin less mm -hmm. okay romans 6 15 to 18 as paul writes he says what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace certainly not do you know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey 
you are that one's slave whom you obey, whether sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that through that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which were which you were delivered and having been set free from sin you have became slaves of righteousness okay so i want to get into this a little bit right here it says in verse 16 it says do you not, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey. Okay? Remember, we're talking spirituality. Everything's spiritual. Whatever you choose to do, you are a slave to that. Understand this. Okay? If, if you choose to live a life of sin, then you are a slave to sin. And who's ever in charge of sin, right? Which is the devil. Before you give your life to God, that's essentially what we are in a nutshell. Slaves to that. You're a slave to whomever you obey. If you obey them, then yes, sir, right away, sir. Let me get that for you, sir. Okay, here's some fornication, sir. I'll get that for you, too. <laughs> right? That, that You're a slave to it because we're a slave to sin. But he says if you're a slave to obedience, right? Listening to God. Standing upright. Being righteous. Right? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please come back again. We become you become a slave to to God. Now what's a slave? A slave is somebody who is under the power of another person, right? They don't have their own they don't have their freedom to do what they want. We were given our free will to do what we want. We have the free will. So when we're living in sin, so many people live in sin and don't see it, don't see it as sin because they don't see themselves as slaves, which is a really bad thing. When we live for God, we are what you call a bond servant. The Bible talks about, about being a bond servant. A bond servant is this. When a person would have a slave in biblical times, they were, they were caused to serve for a set period of time. Okay? When that set period of time was over, so you purchased this slave or this, the their, their slave was given to you in trade and now this person, you own this person. They must do what you say, as you say, when you say, how you say it, okay? Because they are your property. There are slave papers involved of showing ownership, kind of like a pink slip to a car. But after the set amount of days of the time of service that was required, as the owner, you're required to hand them their, their slave papers to allow them to be free. Now they're allowed to go do whatever they want. When we give our lives to God, the Bible refers to us as being slaves to sin, right? When we were given when we were given salvation, we we received our slave papers. You no longer need to serve sin. You've been separated, you've been set free. You're no longer owned by sin. We're given the, the papers back. We're no longer a slave to sin. We've been set free. But we are what you call bond servants. A bond servant is this. A person who received their slave papers back now has the option. They can now leave and tell, tell their master goodbye. Or they can say, you know what, master, you have been good to me. I'm going to stay in your house and serve you because that's what I want to do for you. Because my heart is with your family. I want to be with you, Lord. And stay with their master. When a person does that, that sounds kind of crazy. Right? Why would a slave do that? Well, not all slave owners were brutal. And some of them knew that going back out into the world was going to be that easy for them. So they would want to stay with their master. So they would stay. And they would no longer be forced to serve. But they're now serving because this is what they've chosen to do. And now have the ability to leave whenever they want to. They're called a bond servant. They're free-willed slaves serving their master. When we give our lives to God, that's who we become. Free-willed slaves willing to serve our master. Slave becomes a harsh word. Well, I don't want to be a slave, right? That's the, that's the harsh word for it. But we are free-willed, willing to serve 
our master, right? It's not because we have to. You know that you don't have to serve God. You know, you don't have to serve God. But you know that also you don't have to serve the devil. But did you know that you can only serve one or the other? Mm-hmm. There's no in between. You can't serve you can't serve anything else. Either you're gonna serve God or you're gonna serve the devil. That's it. You either gonna you gotta choose one. The Bible says, choose you this day whom you whom you shall serve, right? So you you get to choose. I'm either gonna serve God or I'm gonna serve the devil. You get to decide. When you decide to choose God, you get to do it free willingly. When you choose the devil, we're not very free will because we get so caught up in our own thoughts. That's why it's important to understand it's what comes out of the heart, comes out of the mouth. What proceeds It proceeds from the heart through our mouth. That's what defiles us because our words can determine whether or not, whether or not we are a child of God. Mm-hmm. Do you think without cussing, foul language, without cussing, do you think just foul language only, Okay, just the, the those three, four little words. Okay, eliminate those. Without using those words, do you think that you can speak in a way that people will not think that you're a Christian? Yeah. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. That's why it was a good answer when, when Cynthia said, glorifying God. Because it's not, it's not it's not it's not the specific words. It's everything that comes with it because what comes out of your mouth proceeds from the heart. Does that make sense? Anybody got any questions? Anybody got input? We want to add mm-hmm. something. Anybody want to yell at me? Anybody? Don't want to go shoot at me? No? <laughs> so when we speak, what are we saying? Before we open our mouth, do we consider how it appears to those who hear us? Or better yet, or better yet, do we consider those around us who hear us? You know that I've been in a store before and I've heard people talking on the other aisle and I know for a fact they don't go to church. Mm-hmm. You can hear people talking on the other aisle. You can tell they don't go to the aisle. You can tell you know they don't go to church. If you go and ask them they go to church, they're going to tell you no. And if they do tell you yeah, then there's a bigger problem involved. But you know what I'm talking about? They're talking in a way you're like, oh my gosh, right? On the flip side of that, I've had people come to me. I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir. I was on the other aisle and I heard you talking. And it was just so refreshing to hear somebody talk about God. You don't hear, you don't hear enough of that anymore. I, would just, I just wanted to tell you, you know what? Thank you. Keep it up. And they walk away. So do they know? Do people that don't even see your face know who you are, but what you're what you're speaking, our words need need to need to glorify God. It needs to show who we are. Now, I have spoken places at work and stuff like that where I'm not saying nothing about God because I'm at work, I'm presenting, I'm doing something like that. But people will ask me, "Yeah, hey, you're a Christian?" Well, yeah, I am. How did you know, right? Okay. Because of the words you're choosing, right? Because so many people don't, so many people in professional settings say those, say some pretty radical things. And it's, it's incredible. To me, it, it's, I think it's disgusting because it's, 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 there's no sense of pride in even what you're doing anymore when you do that. That's just, that's just my opinion. So, any, any questions, any input? Okay. We're going to end right there because, um, because we have food today. So we're going to end right there. And, uh, but I want you to go home and think about this. Words, the things you're speaking, are you considering how it sounds, how it looks? If you can say things that you know you shouldn't be saying, where is that coming from? Because the Bible tells us it comes through the heart. It proceeds from the heart. Does that mean that you're foul and you'll never be right? No. It just means we got to start cleaning the heart. And as, the, as this Bible study continues to progress, we will get to that too. But you got to consider what you're saying. Amen? Want to ask any questions? Any input? Cynthia. No? Johnny, Cynthia, Johnny. you guys are doing good today. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
Hey Amen. So let's uh let's bow our hearts and bless the fellowship. Hey Amen. Let's bow our hearts and bless the fellowship. God, my Father, we thank you, God, today, God, for this time you have given us, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your message, God. But God, we pray, God, as we leave, God, that we'll be men and women, God, that will consider, God, how we sound, how we look, God, as we as we are a representation of who you are, God. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing in our lives. We pray, God, that you bless this time of fellowship and food. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks. It's a special month.